Hey everybody, it's Larry Lurcy. Welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about guides, using them in Photoshop, the guidelines that help you to center things up or set up your rule of thirds in the image. They really are easy to use and something that a lot of people don't know about and don't use in their composition. I think it's something that once you know how to use it, you're going to use it all the time. So, without any further ado, roll the intro. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop, and we're going to take a look at guides. I'm going to show you what the guides are, and then I'm going to show you three ways to use them. There's a bunch of ways you can use guides, but I'm going to show you the three ways that I use them most often when I'm working in Photoshop, and I bet a day does not go by in Photoshop that I don't use guides for one thing or another, so they really are handy. Let's start with this image right here. Let's get ourselves a little space. One of the things you can do is dividing up an image. Let's say you need to know where the halfway point is. You're going to do a texture overlay over half or maybe some sort of color. I don't know. For one reason or another, you need to know where the halfway point is. One way this might come into play is if you're laying out some sort of an album or something and you need to know where the fold is going to be, where the two pages meet, and you know it's going to be halfway. And how do I know where that fold will be? And so what, the way you're going to do that is you're going to come up here to View, New Guide. And this very simple box pops up. Very few options. Uh, so it's super simple. You, you decide if you want horizontal or vertical. Do you want lines going across horizontally or down vertically? Pretty cut and dry. In this case, we want vertical. We want a vertical line going down the center. The position, you can either do it in inches you can do it in pixels, so you can say I want it to be 2 inches from the edge, I want it to be 25 pixels from the edge, or you can do percentages. In this case, because we want it going down the middle, we're going to use percentage. We will just say 50%. So we want a vertical line going through the image at the 50% mark, you know, the 50% of the way across the image, if that makes sense. Hit OK. And there you go, that is right through the center of the image. So if, this, if these were two pages in a book somehow, that's where the pages would, would meet, right in the middle of her face. But now you know that's where the center is. Let's say you want to know where dead center is on the image. Where is the exact center? Then you would do the same thing horizontally. We'd come right back up here to view, new guide. This time we do horizontal, 50%. Now we know that's dead center of the image. So you can use these a lot um, for layout and things. I'll show you one other way to adjust them. Once you have them in here, if you go up here and just grab the Move tool with V, it will allow you to grab one of these, and then you can move it. Say you want text to be lined up exactly with her, um, maybe with her pinky finger. That You want text going right across right there. You would just set it like this. You can set it, move it. You can move this one just to the edge, you, know, you don't want any of the text to go past where she starts, whatever. These are just really handy markers. And if you decide you don't want them on here, you just hit Command or Control semicolon, and they disappear. Just like that. You can also do it in here under View, Show, Guides. You can turn it off right there. Now, uh, once you're done with them, if you want, you decide, nope, I don't, need these in here anymore. I want to start over with all fresh guides. You can do that. You just go up to view, clear guides, and they're gone. So there's a pretty simple way right there of using them to find where certain spaces are in the image. Another way that this comes up a lot is let's say you are doing a gallery wrap canvas. We do this a lot with our portraits where the image wraps around the sides and it's a very popular look. But one of the problems you'll run into is when you send your image off to the lab or whoever's printing your gallery wrap for you, you're going to need usually to leave some sort of an extra amount of image around. And you need to know how much, you know, are you cutting into her head or anything that's important in the image. So a way you would do that with this image, for example, is let's say, for example, let's look at our size right here. Let's go to image, image size. And we can see this is basically it's a five by seven, so it's too small for a gallery wrap anyways, but we'll pretend that it's it's bigger. So five by seven. And let's say you know the gallery wrap is going to take away one inch uh, off of the outside. 
and you want to know where one inch is all the way around on a 5x7. All you would do is go to View, New Guide, and we could start with the vertical and say we want one inch. Then we know we want the other one. It's five inches across, so to come in one inch would be four. So we want the second one at four inches. So we would do new guide, vertical, four inch. And that shows you where an inch off each side would be. And then you could do the same thing, top and bottom, and it would show you exactly how much you'd be cropping. So that is one of the ways that I will personally use it a lot, is doing some sort of a wall portrait, and I need to know how much extra I have without starting to cut into the subject. So it's super handy for that. And again, you can do it by pixels, by inches, whatever it is you want, and then you know exactly where all those things are. You know, another one might be if you're laying out a postcard or something like that, and they tell you, you know, don't do anything on the, the half inch border all the way around, you know, just in case it gets cropped out or something. You can, you know, go back and set these to wherever, a half inch all the way around, and then you know where that zone is. So it really is super helpful for marking places like that. So a third way that we can use this is for composition. Let's assume that we've got a canvas like this and we're going to be bringing this image into the canvas and we want to make sure that our composition is as strong as possible and we want to use something like the rule of thirds. Now, if you're not familiar with the rule of thirds, definitely something you should look into because it's a really powerful compositional tool. But as we start setting this thing up, I will show you um, basically how it works and, and the simple explanation is you, cr you divide the image into thirds vertically and then thirds horizontally. Where those lines intersect are generally referred to as power points and you'd like for your subject to either fall on those lines or even better to fall on the intersections. And that will generally give you a strong composition. So how do we know where those third areas are and you can probably guess from what we just did on the last image. We're going to come up here to View, New Guide. Now we want to have a third of the way in, so we're going to say 33%. Hit OK. We'll do another one, View, New Guide. This time we'll say 67%. That'll give us the other third. Then we're going to do the same thing horizontally. Horizontally, 33%. horizontally 67 percent. And this is our basic rule of thirds. So we know we'd like our subject to fall into one of these four spots if possible, or if it's a landscape you like for the horizon line to fall on one of these two lines if at all possible. So we've got our rule of thirds template set up there. I'm going to drag this image in and then I can simply just kind of move the image around until I get get it how I like it. I'm going to do Command T so that we can um, make this a little bit bigger. And I'm shooting for this horizon line right here which is kind of where the boats are coming through is kind of my horizon. I want that to fall on this line so I'm going to move this down just a hair probably about just like that. Return. Now let's go ahead and turn these guides off. And there you go. You've got a nice composition. You've got your horizon line right on one of the thirds and uh, you know you could try playing around with other options you could decide well I really want to draw the focus to this boat I'm gonna move the boat over so that it's right on a third like that and that also works really well it just kinda depends on are you trying to draw the focus to this boat specifically or do you like it better where it's um, more about the whole dock and things like that it's really just super powerful. So if you're not using guides, I hope this will give you enough information to start giving them a try. And I think you will find the more you use them and get comfortable with them, the more uses you're going to discover that will help you with your current workflow. So there you have it, a quick and simple guide to using guides in Photoshop. Also, be sure to check out the playlist I've put together of other Photoshop videos that are just like this one, breaking Photoshop down into small bite-sized pieces for you. If it helped, please take a second to like the video and subscribe. Click the little bell so you'll know when new content comes out. I do hope that helped, and I hope to see you again soon for more videos. Take care. Bye-bye.